Hi there, happy hump day and welcome to the first happy hump day for 2022. One of my favorite books from last year is a book of fiction written by Sophie Hardcastle called Blow Deck and it tells the story of Olivia and she makes friends with an older couple Maggie and Mac who are avid sailors and Mac teaches Olivia how to sail and in teaching her how to sail he gives her three key things to remember. Firstly or the first step in learning how to sail is you really need to understand and find out how much you don't know. Secondly you need to learn that the ocean and that the wind are unknowable and that means no matter how much you think you know you need to be ready for the unexpected. And thirdly, you need to recognize that you can't change the wind. All you can do is learn how to adjust the sails. When I read that, it really struck me as how relevant that is for how we're all feeling at the moment and what we're going through as we're living through a pandemic. Because there is so much that's unknowable. There's so much that's uncertain and yet we often live with these expectations that we should be able to know everything, control everything, be certain about everything. And yet when we do that, when we attempt to be that all-knowing, all-controlling person who's all-powerful, it can become cons consuming and consuming in a way that's unhealthy because we get fixated on controlling things that are outside of our control, our mind gets stuck, our actions get unhelpful and we can wake up one day and find that we're not where we want to be. So thriving in today's environment isn't about being that all-knowing and all-controlling person. It's much more about understanding and adaptability and that starts with you accepting what needs to change in you for you to be able to make the most of what's going on around you. You go first. And when you think about it, it's just so easy to focus on what we think other people need to do or what they should be doing or how they should change rather than us focusing on what we need to change within us first. And I love the work of the academics, um, Lisa Leahy and Robert Keegan. And in their book, How the Way We Talk Can Change the Way We Work, they talk about this and they talk about how when we think about in organizational change and how we want systems to change, often the people who are leading the change expect everyone else to change first, but also they don't recognize that for the change to happen, something within them often needs to change first. So adapting to a changing world requires each of us to understand the meaning that we're putting on what's happening around us and then examining and really digging into to what extent is that meaning valid or is it invalid? And this isn't about focusing on our technical skills. It's delving into the meaning that drives your thoughts and actions. What's the mental model that you're using to make decisions because all of us have assumptions that underpin our decision making processes and you want to challenge those assumptions. Challenge the assumptions, drop those preconceived ideas. Next, think about your energy. Where are you directing your energy? You know, Oprah Winfrey talks about how we're responsible for the energy that we create but we're also responsible for the energy that we put out and how that impacts other people. So stop and think about it for a minute. Where are you directing your energy? Are you directing it to things that you can't control or even influence? You know, our brain loves control, it loves certainty. And so in an environment where there's lots of moving parts and lots of things that are shifting, one of the things that we can do that helps us feel better is to focus on the small things. What are those small things where we have a choice 
Because when we have a choice, when we feel like we have even just a modicum of autonomy, it helps us feel better. So be very deliberate. Where are you directing your energy and where are you making your decisions? Thirdly, break it down. You know, we're often told, set a goal, set a big goal, go for those really big audacious goals. But sometimes that's not helpful. If we set expectations on ourselves that are unrealistic, all that does is set us up for disappointment. What you're much better at doing is setting goals that are realistic. And now that might be a series of micro goals or mini goals that fit into that macro goal. And then underneath it, underneath all those mini goals, micro steps. What are those small incremental steps, the things that you need to do every day that help you just get one step closer to where it is that you want to be? That feels so much better because when we're feeling like we're making progress, that's motivating. And when we're motivated, we've got that energy, that force to keep going even when things get tough and hard and tricky. See, so break it down. Know what your goals are, be realistic, break them down into mini goals and then into micro steps. And lastly, this might sound counterintuitive, but find time to play. You know, there's a great time to explore and experiment. You know, we do that so often as children, and yet when we get older, we feel like we have to be serious all the time. Don't have time to experiment, don't have time to play. And yet it's through that that we learn about ourselves and we learn about other people. So where are the elements in your day where you can play, experiment, do things differently? I love the quote, and this is one of those quotes that doesn't have an author that it can be attributed to, but life's an adventure, not a charted course. And so when you think about embracing life as an adventure for you in 2022, what can be in store for you? I hope you have a fabulous year, however it unfolds for you. Take care. Have a great week. I'll see you next week.